Okay, finally the much awaited video that shows the hyperbike and the K bike side by side and I'll just do some comparisons and show you what's different about the two of them. So uh, we'll just go over it right now. All right, we'll start with the hyperbike. So one of the big um, selling points for this one and that makes it so nice is how easy it is to take it apart and then you can put it in the um, back seat of your vehicle that you're towing your trailer with or you can tuck it nice and neat into your tack compartment of your horse trailer. And so a couple ways, these are the C shafts. So they have these extra bends in them and they're a little bit wider than the normal A and B shafts. I know that I'm pretty sure that he now also has a set of wide B shafts that are a similar shape to this, but they're a little bit shorter. So um, they would have this bolt here that holds this front together. And these two parts you don't take apart, but to take the shafts off for travel, you will undo this little clip here and pull out the pin. And then I usually put the pin back in the cart when I have it taken down for that. And that's one shaft. And then the other shaft is the same. You would just take the pin out. And then you can take the wheels off. And so there's this little button here on this wheel and you'll push that and then you can pull the wheel off. I don't know if you can see in the video, but these little bearings, these little ball bearings, those press in when you push the button and then they pop out when you let the button go. So one thing you have to really watch when you put your wheels back on, when you get to where you're going, is that those pop out. So you push that pin through and then you pull the wheel to make sure it's on there and those little ball bearings are attached. And then to put your shafts on, you just take this pin out, make sure that your stirrup is facing the correct way, line these holes up, and then you'll put the pin in. And voila, your shafts are back on. So the other thing about the Hyperbike is it has three settings for your wheels. Um, there's three holes, one, two, three. The lowest hole makes you sit up the highest. So for your bigger ponies, um, uh, I'd say 39 inches and up, you're gonna wanna have it on the lowest hole. The middle hole, put you right in the middle, obviously. That would work great for your 35 inch ponies, um, 38 to 35. And then your lowest hole is for your A size minis, so 34 and under, you'll have your wheels here and that will sit you quite low. Um, and so that's another nice feature of the Hyperbike. The K-Bike also can come apart for travel, but you're gonna need some tools. So if you wanna see the wheel here, it's bolted on this um, locking nut and then you have a second locking nut holding that bolt on and so you need a crescent wrench that you can um, grab onto this nut with and then you get this allen wrench when you get the k-bike and it goes in this outside of the wheel here and then you can loosen this and take this wheel off for travel the shafts also are removable so the nice thing about these shafts is that they're fully adjustable. They slide in and out of this tube. This tube is 11 inches long. So at this point, this shaft is all the way down inside here. So I have an extra 11 inches. What you wanna always make sure is that you have at least four inches of this shaft inside here. So that gives you seven inches of telescoping ability with the shaft to um, lengthen and shorten them. Um, and you can also turn them in and out to make them wider or narrower. So to do that, you have your 9 16 crescent wrench and you loosen these bolts here. The shafts slide in and out like so, and they turn so you can make them narrower for the little tiny minis, wider for the bigger ponies, up to quite wide and quite long for a larger Shetland pony, say. I think uh, Kent told me the largest Shetland pony he's driven in his K-bike is a 46 inch Shetland pony mare. Then what I did, what my husband came up with is to get my shaft back into the correct spot. So after I've taken it apart for travel, then I, we marked it so that we would know right where to line it up here and tighten, retighten those little bolts. There's a little marker spot here and 
you can't see it on the camera, but there's a little marker spot there. And I just line those up and then I just tighten these back down. And voila, your shafts are back on and you're ready to go. The other feature about the Hyperbike is the quick, easy adjustment of the stirrup. So you loosen this and then you can slide the stirrup back and forward. And then you can also lower it and raise it. And then to you tighten it, you turn it, and then you lock it in. You want to make sure these tighten down and lock in. Otherwise, your stirrups will drop out from under your feet. So the quick, easy adjustment of the stirrups is another nice feature. The K-Bike also has stirrups. They're just a straight bolt. Um, so far, my foot has really liked this. I think the fact that it's straight is just more comfortable for me personally. That, that's just my self, not everybody, but myself. But these are adjustable as well. Same thing, you just loosen these bolts here. You can slide them back, up and back, and you can rotate them down and up until you get them just the way you like them. So you will need two people to adjust your stirrups. You'll need someone to, um, run the stirrup and have the crescent wrench while you sit in the bike and put your foot on them. We did this while it was hitched to Zorro. That makes the most sense to me. Um, if your pony can't handle you doing that, then your pony's probably not quite ready for a bike situation. They should stand really nice and quiet. And um, I have a picture that I'll insert after this little section of Zorro while we were working. He just had a foot cocked and took a nap while we did all the adjusting on the shafts. We adjusted the bike, we adjusted the big, sh the big shafts on the basket. Um, and did all that and we went in and out of the garage four times or so and he just took a nap the whole time So in my opinion, that's the perfect bike pony um, So these again are the sea shafts usually they have a gig end that comes down I'll insert a photo in right here to show that gig end Um, this is the shaft stop. So you actually want this to be behind your shaft loop. That way, if your breaching fails, your cart will run into your shaft loop before it runs into your pony. Um, in some cases, sometimes I can have my shaft loop in front of this, and sometimes I have to have it behind. Depends on how I'm, what kind of terrain I'm driving on that day. This is your footman's loop on here. And so um, because of where I kind of have to have Zorro in the shafts, these are just a touch too far back for him um, because unfortunately um, this set of shafts is just a little bit too long for Zorro. So we cut six inches off the front and um, Bob did make me these. They're two inches shorter in the back, but I think they need to be another two inches shorter um, to get the, the placement of Zorro just right. So what happens is when we turn this part, and, and before when it was the gig end, the whole gig end would come up and jam into his neck in the front of his shoulder. So we would have to make big sweeping turns like you would with an easy entry cart. Um, we can turn a little bit better now, but the end of this um, does jab him in the neck. So I was thinking maybe we'd have to cut these back another inch and a half or so to get rid of that jabbing in the neck. But then I don't have enough room here for my shaft loop, so it's kind of a little quandary there. I really feel like the Hyperbike works really well for ponies 35 and under and minis. Uh, my friend uh, Molly has a 35 inch mini and a 32 inch mini and her bikes balance beautifully with those two minis. The Hyperbike weighs 30, 33 pounds so it's a little bit lighter as well than the cake bike. Um, so I do think it works really good for your smaller minis. All right, on these shafts you'll note that there are several loops here. So if you had a really large pony and you had your shafts telescoped out quite far, you might need to use this loop for your holdbacks, and this would be your footman's loop. Um, when I have Zorro hitched in here, this is the one I use for my holdbacks. Keep in mind, whichever loop you use, that you have a nice straight line from your britching ring to your shaft and that you don't have a line that comes down from the pony's top of the hip to the shaft for your holdbacks. You want your shaft loop to rest in the in this um, curve right here on the end of the shaft. And 
the thing that I think is really interesting is that you can put like a piece of uh, like a leather cat collar, dog collar, a nylon one from here to here, and then you have a closed shaft end. And so some people would just feel safer having that option. Um, you do have to wiggle this into your shaft loops, especially if you have the adjustable shaft loops. So I don't feel like this would ever fall out of my shaft loops. It's just not really a possibility with this ring on here but it is nice to have that if you want to go ahead and shut that down close it and then just feel a little bit safer i do want to note that because these shafts are adjustable um, widthwise and lengthwise i was able to dial it in exactly how i needed it on zorro and i had zero balancing issues at all with this spike i don't have any bouncing that happens in this end of the shafts um, it doesn't jump up or down at all when i adjust myself in the seat or anything so um, that also lessens the chance that your shafts are going to pop out of your shaft loops and it's better for your horse it's just not beating them up if you can get your balance right the hyperbike wheel is from edge to edge 24 inches tall and then width wise it's two inches wide and these are the pneumatic wheels or tires excuse me i've never had trouble with them um, I don't have cactus here, so that's probably part of it. I know people that have cactus where they live, they need to have the solid rubber wheels and the ride doesn't really change that much. Um, there is no suspension in the hyperbike. The body of the bike is supposed to flex a little bit when you go over bumps and stuff. Um, so the people that I know that have the hard rubber wheels haven't noticed that much difference going over bumps. You, you're still going to bounce, so make sure you have your feet well seated in the stirrups. From outside edge to outside edge, this wheel is 25 inches tall and it's three inches wide. Kent can do different size wheels. So you can get a little bit shorter wheel. If you have a smaller mini that you wanna use this with, you can get a little narrower wheel. And he also ha has metal wheels that you can get to as well. So for more difficult driving um, over lots of, if you're driving in lots of grass and things like that, you might wanna do a metal wheel. The hyperbike has a boat seat. It, this one, it has the nice tall back and then they slide. And so they have this little spring here and the seat can slide forward and back. So that's another feature of the hyperbike. The K bike has the boat seat too, the folding boat seat. And it has the lever, the paddle over here that you pull up and you can slide the seat forward and back with this. I actually kind of like this lever off to the side it doesn't get hung up on Zorro's tail. So the one in the middle, often his tail kind of gets tangled on it and my lines get caught on it. But on this one, I haven't had that happen at all. So I really like this setup. The K bike single tree is a closed end. So you'll need um, quick release shackles. You attach the quick release shackles on here and then you snap these onto your combo end traces or any trace that has a ring on it. So, and again, um, you'll need a little bit longer traces for the K bike like you do for the hyper bike since the single tree is under the seat. The K bike when it's set up with the short shafts weighs about 55 pounds. It's a little bit heavier than the hyper bike which is between 30 and 33 pounds. Um, this is a little heavier duty steel and with the bolts and everything it just weighs a little bit more. When you add the long shafts with the foot basket, the total weight of the vehicle is around 90 pounds. So pretty similar to one of your like Kingston easy entry carts or something, um, but much sturdier and more stable. The nice thing about the K-Bike is there is this option for these long shafts with the foot basket. And what that means, simply put, is you get two carts for the price of one. So you can put this foot basket and long shafts on your bike and now you have a training cart. It's wider, it's sturdier, you have the boat seat, you can put your feet down in the basket and you're ready to go. With the longer shafts, you're safer for those young horses that might have a little buck in them, a little kick up or something. Um, you're not so close to them where their butt's in your, in your lap here. You have some space. And again, these shafts telescope quite a ways out so, and they come really long. I think they're something like 80 inches long. We trimmed off enough that it's more like an easy entry style cart. I mean, still these are like a marathon shaft. So this bend here is where your shaft loop sits. So they're a little further forward in the, in the shafts. Um, so you, and we have plenty of room. I think we had about 15 or 16 inches from the front of this to Zorro's tail. And that is so as Oliver grows, he won't outgrow this cart. Um, 
and he won't. He'll, he'll be about Zorro size, even if he's a little bigger, these shafts will still fit him. And they also, they t uh, turn in and out so you can make them wider or narrower as needed. So again, you have the single tree with the clothes in, so you need the quick release shackles on this one. Um, and I will insert a little photo of Zorro hitched to the bike with the shafts and the basket in here so you can see how that looks. I wanted to ha uh, show you real quick too how they fit in my shed. The hyperbike of course breaks down so I have the shafts up here in, um, on these hooks and then the body of the hyperbike is right back here on this box and the wheels are tucked in the wall behind. I just have it tipped back on the seat, shafts up. And then my long shafts are here with the foot basket. So this is a, a K-bike for another person here in Montana. So everything fits quite nicely in my shed here. As you can see, all my harness and halters and whatnot and um, some chimicum tack stuff and then my carts. So everything is safe inside and does not weather outside. I hope you enjoyed this comparison video between the Hyperbike and the K-Bike. And as usual, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments of the video below or you can email me. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks so much. Bye.